Hi everyone, this is K True Radio. I'm Rachel here with Trevor Hurst of Conline Crush. So how are you today? I'm really good actually, Rachel. I'm really good, really good. Thank you. Where are you located right now? Um almost a little bit above the middle of North America in a city called Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. Yeah, you had to add in Canada because um, Americans, we don't really know Canada, Canadian yeah, geography. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. I, um, I heard that you're going to have a new single on the 29th. That's correct. Um, we're releasing a brand new single on a brand new label. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, it's called Get Out of the Way. It's coming out on the 29th of May. And um, yeah, we're, we're super stoked. Can you tell us what inspired the single and what the single is about? You know, it's interesting because initially when we wrote the song, it was kind of about the music industry. And it has sort of a lyrical content that that fits right now with COVID. And that's sort of why we decided to re-record the song and the the whole idea is just that there's um a need i think or or a desire by the population i think as a whole people are pretty cool and pretty good but the the government sort of manipulates the situation you know for political purposes whatever and so this whole song is basically just like get out of the way and let us as healthcare workers do our job as citizens do our our, our duty as, and be kind to one another like just get out of the way so that's kind of what it's about you personally are a nurse. Yes. Can you tell me more about how you, that how you got into that line, uh, that field of work? Well, like our band had been going for quite a few years, and um, I had my parents got sick, and uh, I got divorced. A bunch of things happened in the sequence, and so I really need to like figure something out for the kids just in case you know this rock thing <laughs> doesn't work out uh so anyway i went back to university and uh i got my bachelor in science in psychiatric nursing and uh it, i i'm so glad i did i mean it was it was horrifying at the beginning because you know going back to school and just all of it was just overwhelming but um it's been very rewarding and it kind of inf it works well with my music it informs my music if i could say that Can you talk about like what what brought you back into music because of like you mentioned something about internal politics threatening like well we with with my job as a, as a psychiatric nurse I I uh, my mother had passed away from cancer so I didn't go into work right away and um, I was kind of grieving and a friend of mine and I started talking and they had mentioned that there was a First Nation uh in southern manitoba that needed a, a community nurse and that i should apply and i was like ah, i don't know but i gave them a call and uh the the woman that answered the phone she was like yes apply 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 we really need somebody right now and i go but i'm not i'm brand new like i've never done this she goes you'll learn you'll learn it'll be great it'll be great so i hung up then like about i don't know a week later, after I procrastinate, procrastinate, she phones phones me and, and says, "Hi, I haven't seen. You. Like, did you mail your your uh, application? What's what's going on?" Like, and she sort of like goaded me into getting the job or trying for the job. So anyway, I ended up being the home and community care nurse at Chinookwapka Dakota Nation, and uh, it was amazing. I did it for three years, and uh, during those three years, I was still playing shows in the summer, you know, when the university was off, going to school, or I mean, uh, working and uh, taking my breaks and playing shows and then also having uh these guys that uh, i had met along the way with a film crew follow me around for those three years intermittently and so we have a documentary coming out called flatlander and it's about uh, me being a singer and deciding to go back and play music and uh, you can see a preview or a trailer at flatlanderfilm.com but to answer your question, while I was working there, I kind of got burnt out and ended up leaving that job. But everybody I worked with, you know, encouraged me to, to do my music. And I also realized, too, that, like, with music, I can reach a bigger audience and I can maybe have a bigger impact. And so I can still 
advocate for the people that I normally work with only on a bigger scale. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do that. And like, I'll still probably do some psychiatric nursing, which I, I really enjoy. It's a rewarding career. Where can we find the, the documentary once it's released? Um, right now we're actually, um, in the process of editing so uh we're thinking of doing an indiegogo to fundraise just to finish the editing um I and mean, we're talking to several broadcasters but people can still see the trailer uh and, and keep up on all the latest at uh flatlanderfilm.com oh, I, had, I had a question then it just i just blanked i'm sorry um <laughs> let's see I could tell you what a home and community care nurse does, which is kind of fun. Sure. Uh, tell us more about your occupation as a home and community nurse. Um, it's a really interesting job. So during, you have, a, you have a, a, a health, they call it the health center. And I would have, a, I had an exam room and I also had an office. And um, during the week I would see patients for minor things. Like if they came in, you know, hey, is this broken? Does this look infected? That kind of stuff. It was really fun. Like, cause you'd have conversations and, make jokes and I was uh during the time I had the blonde hair but it was very long people couldn't believe I was the nurse right like there's this guy in there with long hair looks very out of place and I'd always say I know right and then we'd have a laugh so we it's it was always uh, very fun and you know it was a job that yeah there's a lot of humor involved but also I had 36 elders that I would go to their homes and do their um vitals and make sure their meds were done and and attend to their needs and also provide um, activities like take them for community lunches and or outings to uh, fireworks stuff like that so it was a cool job it was really really cool and I had a couple of staff underneath me and I learned so much about Dakota culture they taught me so many things and yeah it was a life-changing event and that's why I think the movie is going to be so cool for people to watch the change between the five-year hiatus of being like having music out do you think there's a difference from before and after because before you had toured with kiss um worldwide you played the junos yeah like you have like this one world and then now you have this kind of other thing i i do you can't like with music for me everything that happens in my life or the band's life sort of impacts the music, I don't think there's any way you can get away from it because it, for us, it's a very personal thing, creating and, and writing music. So it, 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 yes, definitely. Um, we're kind of on a tangent right now where we're um, writing and working songs that sort of have a more, and I really don't like saying this term, but classic rock, like just vibe in terms of just how they were structured and kind of made with some of those real um, dramatic moments and a bit more, you know, um, I just don't, I don't know how to describe it, but then we met, we meld that with our sound, our industrial sound, and it just sort of is, is a really neat combination and we're really enjoying it. It's, it's fun. And like, we've always as a band tried to grow musically, how we write and how we put songs together and where we write and where we record everything. We try to push those boundaries as much as possible because it's important. I think as an artist, you find out, I think one of the most important things you find out as an artist is that over time. You know, a lot of people focus on, well, can we get a hit? Can we get this? Can we get that? Can we play this show? Can we but really, you learn as an artist, you've got to fall in love with the process. The process of writing songs, you know, the process of producing them, and then letting those things go out into the airwaves. Whatever happens, happens. But you have to love the process, because that's, that's where the, the sweet spot is. Tell me how quarantine has been affecting your daily life now that a lot of things have shut down. And I can only imagine that the community that you're in, it's drastically different than for the rest of us. Well, so yeah, I live in the center of the country part-time and then my band is in Vancouver. So obviously I can't go see my band right now. There's no travel between different provinces. Um, so that's, been difficult also um i've had to stop work because the kids are all at home and my uh wife she's also a nurse her job is kind of more integral and and 
needed. So she's in working in the community right now. And yeah, so I stay home and I'm watching the children and uh, yeah, that's, that's like, yeah, <laughs> that's a full time job as many parents know. Once quarantine kind of like subsides and things go back to the quote unquote new normal, what do you think, how do you think your band is going to adapt to this new world post Corona? It's wild, isn't it? Like, I, I really don't know. Um, like, I think it's so, it's so different. It's gonna be so different because I would, I would probably encourage concert goers to wear a mask even after the, the, you know, we are let out of quarantine because I think we're still going to have these little waves. It is an adaptable virus. It is a, um, a very, very contagious virus, you know? So I think, and that'll really be hard as a, as a, a band, you're looking out and everybody's got a mask. You can't see their faces. You can't see if they're smiling. You can't see their emotions as well. And that would be weird. And so I don't know. And then like, I would hate to be responsible for getting anybody sick. You know, we have a concert and then all of a sudden they say, yeah, the Econline Crush concert, 25 people were infected and, you know, three died. I'd be like, oh my gosh, it'd be so terrible. So I don't know. I think that there's going to be very, ba very, very much there'll be baby steps. Um, but I think you're going to see because of the inability to tour more artists will be content, you know, so there'll be a lot more music out there because everybody's kind of going stir crazy. And I think they're just writing and creating. And uh, I think, so there'll be a lot of new art, which will be very exciting, but I don't know about tours. I just don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out. Trying to end the first part of the interview on a lighter note. Is there anything you're looking forward to once um, quarantine ends, whether it's like getting like, performing on stage again, seeing people again. Yeah, I like performing, you know. Um, yeah, I'll never take performing for granted again. Like, I just can't believe it's not happening, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm really, even rehearsal, I'm just looking forward to getting together with the guys and jamming out some songs and being able to be in a room together and making some noise. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, that's the conclusion of the first part of the interview. Sure. Are you ready for the second part? I'm ready. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it up real quick. Dear Lord, I need to organize this notebook. Okay. Tell me this. Hi, everyone. This is K2 Radio. I'm Rachel here with. Trevor Hurst of a Conline Crush. So how are you today? I'm really good actually, Rachel. I'm really good, really good. Thank you. Where are you located right now? Um, almost a little bit above the middle of North America in a city called Brandon, Manitoba, Canada. Yeah, you had to add in Canada because um, Americans, we don't really know Canada, Canadian yeah, geography. geography. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. I, um, I heard that you're going to have a new single on the 29th. That's correct. Um, we're releasing a brand new single on a brand new label. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, it's called Get Out of the Way. It's coming out on the 29th of May. And um, yeah, we're, we're super stoked. Can you tell us what inspired the single and what the single is about? You know, it's interesting because initially when we wrote the song, it was kind of about the music industry and it has sort of a lyrical content that, that fits right now with COVID. And that's sort of why we decided to re-record the song. And the, the whole idea is just that there's um, a need, I think, or, or a desire by the population, I think as a whole, people are pretty cool and pretty good, but the, the government sort of manipulates the situation, you know, for political purposes, whatever. And so this whole song is basically just like, get out of the way and let us as healthcare workers do our job, as citizens do our, our, our duty as, and be kind to one another, like just get out of the way. So that's kind of what it's about. You personally are a nurse. Yes. Can you tell me more about how you, that, 
how you got into that line, uh, that field of work? Well, like our band had been going for quite a few years and um, I had, my parents got sick and uh, I got divorced, a bunch of things happened in the sequence. And so I really need to like figure something out for the kids just in case, you know, this rock thing <laughs> doesn't work out. Uh, so anyway, I went back to university and uh, I got my bachelor in science in psychiatric nursing. And uh, it, I, I'm so glad I did. I mean, it was, it was horrifying at the beginning because, you know, going back to school and just all of it was just overwhelming. But um, it's been very rewarding and it kind of, inf it works well with my music. It informs my music, if I could say that. Can you talk about like what, what brought you back into music because of like, you mentioned something about internal politics, stunning, like. Well, we, with, with my job as a, as a psychiatric nurse, I, I, uh, my mother had passed away from cancer, so I didn't go into work right away. And um, I was kind of grieving and a friend of mine and I started talking and they had mentioned that there was a First Nation uh, in Southern Manitoba that needed a, a community nurse and that I should apply. And I was like, ah, I don't know, but I gave them a call. And uh, the, the woman that answered the phone, she was like, yeah, supply, apply, apply. We really need somebody right now. And I go, but I'm, not, I'm brand new. Like, I've never done this. She goes, you'll learn, you'll learn. It'll be great. It'll be great. So I hung up. Then like about, I don't know, a week later after I procrastinated, procrastinated, she phones, phones me and, and says, hi, I haven't seen, like, did you mail your, your uh, application? What's, what's going on? Like, and she sort of like goaded me into getting the job or trying for the job. So anyway, I ended up being the home and community care nurse at Chinook Wapka Dakota Nation. And uh, it was amazing. I did it for three years. And uh, during those three years, I was still playing shows in the summer, you know, when the university was off, going to school, or I mean, uh, working and uh, taking my breaks and playing shows. And then also having uh, these guys that uh, I had met along the way with a film crew follow me around for those three years intermittently. And so we have a documentary coming out called Flatlander. And it's about uh, me being a singer and deciding to go back and play music. And uh, you can see a preview or a trailer at flatlanderfilm.com. But to answer your question, while I was working there, I kind of got burnt out and ended up leaving that job. But everybody I worked with, you know, encouraged me to, to do my music. And I also realized too that like, with music, I can reach a bigger audience and I can maybe have a bigger impact. And so I can still advocate for the people that I normally work with only on a bigger scale. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do that. And like, I'll still probably do some psychiatric nursing, which I, I really enjoy. It's a rewarding career. Where can we find the, the documentary once it's released? Um, right now we're actually, um, in the process of editing so uh we're thinking of doing an indiegogo to fundraise just to finish the editing um and then we're talking to several broadcasters but people can still see the trailer uh and, and keep up on all the latest at uh flatlanderfilm.com i had i had a question and then it just i just blanked i'm sorry um <laughs> let's see I could tell you what a home and community care nurse does, which is kind of fun. Sure. Uh, tell us more about your occupation as a home and community nurse. Um, it's a really interesting job. So during, you have, a, you have a, a, a health, they call it the health center. And I would have, a, I had an exam room and I also had an office. And um, during the week I would see patients for minor things. Like if they came in, you know, hey, is this broken? Does this look infected? That kind of stuff. It was really fun. Like, cause you'd have conversations and, make jokes. And I was, uh, during the time I had the blonde hair, but it was very long. People couldn't believe I was the nurse, right? Like there's this guy in there with long hair, looks very out of place. And I would always say, I know, right? And then we'd have a laugh. 